So far on their journey, Strides have had it pretty easy. Run into a few snags here and there, but everything's been pretty chill. This season is the season where shit starts hitting the fan and you can't be playing them games anymore. Yeah. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? The Insane Game Freak here here to bring you One Piece Season 4 review because somebody won't stop nagging me about it on Wii U. You know who you are, you bastard. Moving on. So Season 4 is, and a lot of people are like, you should review Season 4 and Season 5 together because technically the way those two arcs are, you could do that, but I'm not going to because these... There are, there are separate seasons for a reason, and you could technically separate the arcs into two separate sections, but I think you could do it either way. Me personally, I just feel like reviewing season four, especially because the dub is already completely out for season four, and it's airing on Toonami, so I figured this would be the best time. So, season four pretty much picks up right after Scott Pia, and if you buy the DVDs, just know the first episode is filler, so you can honestly skip the first episode. Now, even though this... This season and season five get a lot of praise. Season four starts with Davy back fight. Davy back fight really holds no real importance whatsoever, except that it's it's just a fun, chilled arc about betting your pirate crews and betting money and your pride as a pirate. And long story short, nothing real major comes of it. But what happens directly after is what people lose their shit over. See, the whole thing is that the difference, I'm going to use Naruto as an example here, but the difference between Naruto and One Piece is that Naruto came out the gate having to get better. I mean, Naruto out the gate was not that strong. Luffy out the gate was one shot in motherfuckers until, what, Log Town? And even then, he still got away by some magical luck of the draw or, should I say, dragon? Anyways, and then you had he he started he kept one shining things after that. Then you got to Crocodile, which is the, which was his first real challenge. And then after that, he just continued to one shot things. And then we get to here, and they were like, you know, you can't be a pirate crew that is this small, do so much in such a little amount of time, and still be happy go lucky. So then Oda was like, we got to put the level of seriousness and repercussions for their actions into effect. And how do they do this, you ask? They introduce one of the three admirals. The best way to describe the admirals in One Piece is simply put God God tier. As of right now, this is this is our this is the highest we, we see right now. For right now, it does not get any more dangerous than the Admiral. The, and it's only one of them that is introduced. And granted, this arc isn't just about, it has the theme of you start of them, because pretty much after this arc, after this particular arc, every arc after this for a while, excluding maybe one arc or two, is just showing how they can't just casually do what the fuck they want to do anymore without struggling. Like, they're going to struggle from this arc forward, and that's kind of the main theme. But the whole thing with the Admiral... It's just kind of the tip of the iceberg, because once they finish with that whole situation, you introduce the Water 7. Water 7, bar none, has caused the most shift and rift into the, the Straw Hat crew next to another event that happens a little later, I think around, was it Season 7? Yeah, it'll probably be Season 7. Let's just say, this, this, for this arc and next arc, you know, Season 4 and Season 5, Mainly focus, I guess you could technically say Luffy, Usa, and Robin. Which is cool, because as a fan of the series up until this point, you don't know shit about Robin. I mean, she's been this ambiguous character that's been randomly helping Luffy during the Alabaster arc when she had no reason to. Then he saves her, and I guess you could say as a way for paying her back. She joins the crew, and you would think you get some type of backstory on her, because up to this point, she's been the most non-conventional character to join the crew. Everyone else had kind of a basic formula. Robin's the one that like said, fuck the formula, and just gave her something really random. And then, it's like, we don't know anything about her. Well, good news, you're going to learn some stuff in this arc, but particularly next arc is what you really want to look forward to. The Usopp stuff is dealing with a lot of underlining things 
that you may have not even noticed. I think I think when the Usopp stuff happened in this arc, a lot of people were just like, I didn't even think those were issues. And then you really and you sit down and you think about it and you're like, wow, those were issues. And that was the interesting thing. I'm not gonna spoil it, but let's just say some stuff goes down. Uh, they're also looking for a ship right this arc and next arc. And this is when you start seeing a lot more of the world. This is when the world really starts opening up because this is when they start introducing the Navy and organizations in the Navy. I mean, as I say, you're, you're, one of the first things introduced to you in terms of the Navy, this arc, is the fucking Marines and the Admiral. Ah! And it just gets worse. It gets worse. Also, prepare to see Luffy get his ass kicked a lot this arc. I think out of this entire arc, he only wins one fight. And that fight he does win is not a fight worth winning. Uh, that's the best way to, yeah, that's the best way to describe it. It's, it's, the only fight he wins is kind of a disappointment. The stuff of Robin is kind of just brought up this art. Like, this art kind of sets up Robin's situation while explaining some things. And then on top of that, it's a new area. So you're introduced to a whole bunch of new characters. Particularly a lot of the people from the shipwrights place. Because, as I said, they're looking for a shipwright this arc. And you've been hearing it casually that they're trying to fix the marriage since they got this money from Jaya and they got it cashed in. So it's, it's just a whole bunch of stuff. This is also one of the first arcs that decides to take a very different approach to the typical One Piece style, which would be the mystery kind of setting. I swear to God, you spend half of this arc not knowing what the full scope of things are. And, you know, and that's different from other arcs where the Straw Hats may not know something, but you have the general idea of what's going on. The difference is that you are kind of with the Straw Hats in the sense that you don't know what the fuck is happening. They're not telling you barely anything. And then you're introduced to other, not only other characters who are, who, who are ally-ish characters, but other characters who are like villainous characters. The main one being Frankie. Now, if you've been introduced to the One Piece series before, you may know the spoiler material about Frankie, because honestly, to, to hear about One Piece nowadays, people, you can't even, to show just a picture of the crew spoils so much. And if you've seen Frankie in any pictures of the crew, you already know how this goes down. But just know that it does not go the way a stereotypical... Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for those who don't know, but let's just say, if you if you haven't seen it, Frankie has probably the most, un as a fan of the Straw Hats, he has the most infuriating introduction because of what he does in the, be in the first few episodes he's introduced in. And I'm not even going to explain anything further than that. Also, this, this, this season has probably one of the biggest mind fucks in it. Uh, regarding a lot of things, I'm not gonna go too. That's the one thing about this art. Like to me, the the biggest fun of this art was just learning things. The problem is, is because you're watching it now in 2013 when these episodes I think originally came out in 2004. A lot of this has been spoiled for you, especially because this this arc in season five had been hyped to death. So you at the very least know some minor spoilers because of so many AMVs and clips and people referencing it in videos so for the first time watcher you're not gonna get the full experience now if you've managed to avoid all of this and you're watching this review you better fucking watch it quick before someone ruins your day don't even read the comments for this video because I know a lot of people are gonna spoil it to me season 4 is not my favorite season um, to me the main reason is because it doesn't fit the One Piece style it's a darker tone to expand the series further out. And I appreciate that, but in terms of overall enjoyment, I probably wouldn't say it's my favorite, personal favorite series season. But I know it is a lot of others. Like, a lot of people like this season a lot. This and the next one. Um, and that's perfectly cool, but I just want to say that it's not stereotypical One Piece fair. So you might be a little turned off from that. If you like the stereotypical One Piece fair, if you don't, and you wanted them to take it to the next level, this pretty much this this is it. This is this is your wet dream right here. I mean, I don't know if you guys, if you if you ever had that moment where you've watched a TV show or a movie or whatever, and you're waiting for that por portion to make you go, I'm invested into this in the long haul, especially with TV shows and whatnot. You hit a certain season, some shit happens, you're just like, all right, I'm dedicated now. 
me personally, I was dedicated to Ryan Alabaster. That was my that or the beginning of Grand Line. Those were my two main arcs that pretty much sold me to make me in this for the long haul. Naruto, a lot of people would say it's the tuning exams or even the rescue Sasuke stuff. But One Piece, if you weren't already dedicated, this is the arc that pretty much knocked everybody on the fence onto the I'm in it for the long haul because. The, the shit just gets so ridiculous. But um, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not even going to talk about some of the characters that are introduced because to me, that spoils it and not doing it. So, uh, season four, bar none, is that whole shit season. No matter if it's not your favorite season or not, it's not my favorite season. And I'll still admit to you, this is that old shit season. You come into this thing and it's going to be, oh, it's going to be some fun. Go to a new island, meet some new characters, fight a new villain, then you move on. No. Hell no. This, this is that game changing arc. This is that arc where you, you fuck around, you get killed. And in, in just the one yeah, it only gets it only gets worse from there. But we'll see. So, anyways, that's pretty much our review for season four. Please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Who is your favorite season four introduced character? Because there's a lot of them. Please don't I would ask for a reason why, but as I said, well, you're probably gonna put spoils in the comments anyway, but you know. Who's your favorite season four character? Uh what's your favorite fight in season four? And MVP for season four. Which stride do you think is the most development in this season? I would say this season and next season, but you know, you gotta wait until all season five is out. And then I want my season six Funimation. And now it's my season six. I already approve of your bro bro voice actor. By the way, just a little side note. Brooks, voice actor in English, Ian Sinclair, the dude who does Toriko, which is very weird to me. I'm completely sold. Anyways, life's a game. Play to win. And I will catch you guys later. Peace. One piece. Actually, one piece. Bye.